spent today with Mr. Fox Outfitters. It's Tim Fox. He's a guide up in Northern California. And I talked to him about his rigging for the Lower Sacramento River and to go into detail about how he sets up that rig. Basically, uh, the type of line you want to use, you want to use a floating fly line matched to your rod. Some You can even overweight it by one. What I do is I just loop to loop the butt section on. And your butt section is just heavy mono, and that helps transition from the fly line to your leader. Now when we're fishing, when I say leader, you think of a tapered leader that you buy in a store, which is great for, for high stick nymphing and dry fly fishing and all that. Um, but with the indicator, you want to use just straight mono or fluorocarbon. And so um, I'm using 25 pound or 20 pound uh, butt section, amnesia. Some guys go clear, some guys get into it. I have clients that will ha go with other guides and then I have to cut that stuff off and I'll put mine on. Then they'll go back to the other guide and they have to cut. They go back and forth and they, uh, they, all of us guides laugh and say, no, it has to be this way. Find what works for you. <clears throat> anyway, so you're going to go to something heavy that won't break, but something that's thin enough to cut through the water when you're fishing. So I like 17-pound um, Maxima. It's fairly inexpensive. It'll last a long time, and that's my leader section. And I, this section uh, I will use. I usually measure it out. I'll just measure it on my rod. So from my nail knot here on my butt section down to... The swivel, down to the swivel is nine and a half feet. Sometimes I go a little longer, 10 feet. And that can be a little difficult to cast, so you'll, you'll want to practice that. But basically, that's the section that goes on. I'll get uh, some rubber bobber stoppers, and that's how I adjust this, because I use heavy weight, and you can't just fish shallow water on a deep setting, because the heavy weight will get caught on the bottom all the time. So you have to do a lot of adjusting. Some guys will use toothpicks, which work fine, but I'm particular, my OCD, this satisfies my OCD. I like them all neat and clean, little bobber stoppers that you can pretty much pick up anywhere. Um, and so that way I can adjust the depth. And then I really, really like, I've been using it for about eight, nine years now, the Jadicators made by Jay Cockrum up in Truckee. They're made out of balsa wood. He hand makes them out of balsa wood. They're fantastic. And as you can see, it's a hot color on top, the pink. And then a lot of us guides will color the bottom. This one's black. Sometimes I'll spray paint like a gray flex seal on them. Jay hates that, but I, you gotta customize it. But the point is on this river, it doesn't matter too much on the underside what color it is. And the water has enough particulate matter in it that it's not super clear. Places like the Trinity and, and where the water's just gin clear and there's a lot of guides and the fish are spooky. Yeah, you wanna color up that bottom side so when the fish look up there, they don't see it, but yet you can retain your hot color on top so that you can pick it out really well. Usually, everybody's eyes are different, but usually like a hot pink or a hot orange is your best color for glare in the water. Some people see your chartreuse better, but whatever, whatever you like. Um, anyway, so this is fully adjustable. So it's a bobber, they're bobber stoppers and they're rubber. It's the, they're one shot wonders. You actually thread them on. And so because I guide and there's a lot of people using my gear, they get thrashed and I'll have to replace them every other, every month, every other month. But it, a normal person that's fishing, should this should last at least a season. So once you put the bobber stoppers on, you're good to go. And um, you're just grabbing them and sliding them. I use five because sometimes there's drag in the water and if you use fewer, they'll slip a little bit. So I use five of them on top and on bottom. And all I'm doing is I'm grabbing one or two or three at a time, slide them, and then slide the bottom ones. Um, you, you know, some people like it free sliding, I don't. I want the weight to go straight down and I'm fishing, just like that. And so if you get a good drift, this football shaped, you can see these bo uh, bobber stoppers up here, this will float like this, it acts like a little thing. So if it's sticking straight up, you have a good drift. If it's leaning to the side, you have to mend. And so this thing floats like a cork, supports a lot of weight. And I mean, some of these that I've had for eight years, I'm still fishing. So they're a little pricey when you go to the store, but they're worth every penny. You're not gonna have to buy a whole bunch. So that's the indicator setup. Now, 
you say fly fishing a swivel well yeah it just it keeps everything from the swivel to the butt section you're not cutting so if you break off below the swivel all you're doing is replacing your tippet and your and your flies so this this stays the same and I, I put uh, sometimes I'll use uh, like a water gremlin removable shot or your Dinsmore 10 SSG or bullet heads you can buy them in the bass bass market um, for in different tungsten dunk tungsten weights right now I have a an eighth ounce head which is pretty heavy to cast on a fly rod but for deeper water it's great uh, and then below the swivel we start to get into our flies and I'm using 10 pound, eight pound, six pound. I'm using three flies and I'm stepping down. So if I hook the bottom one, that six pound will break before the 10 pound does. Um, and the reason why I do that, a lot of people uh, freak out and go, oh gosh, this is too heavy. You know, the fish are gonna see it. No, they don't. This river is not super clear. Um, and if it ever does get super clear, probably later this summer with the lake being so low, uh, it'll get really clear and I'll step it down to maybe eight, six, four pound. Um, but there's really fluorocarbon, there's really no reason to go lighter and these fish are big. I bend out a lot more hooks uh, than I do on fish than I will breaking them off. I don't like, I, I tie flies, I don't like losing flies. So that's why I go that heavy and it doesn't matter. And I know there'll be other guides watching me right now that will argue, but whatever. Um, so you know the flies are going to vary from year to year or season to season um, and like I said I like to mix it up try different things right now the PMDs are hatching so I try to imitate that and usually what I'll do is either do a big uh, an egg or a big rubber leg stone fly for the lead it kind of adds at a tractor and sometimes they'll hit it uh, right now I'm just got three nondescript nymphs on usually big medium small uh, distance is personal preference i like 16 inches between each one maybe 18 yeah so i use three i'll tie the tippet off the bend of the hook uh, on regular hooks the new fandangled european nymph jigs the pertagons and stuff like that usually go from eye to eye um, but generally off off the bend of the hook Usually I'll put the heavy fly on on top, but the the new the the fandangle pertagons and stuff They're such a small profile with a heavy tungsten bead on them That it's really nice to put it on the bottom because it's pulling the you got the heavy first one and it's pulling down So everything's down and a lot of times you'll get them They're pulling the other flies down So you're getting them on the bottom fly and the middle fly and the top fly so it doesn't matter, but that, that heavy small nymph on the bottom increases the hookups from what I can best surmise by observation. So that's, that's the basic full setup right there. Tim Fox is the owner of Mr. Fox Outfitters and he guides on the Lower Sacramento River. He does a drift boat as well as walk and wade. And as you can see, is really knowledgeable and has a really good understanding of what works out there and what is successful. So if you want some more of that and you want to guide up there in Northern Cal, let us know. We'll put you in touch with Mr. Fox Outfitters. And we'll see you right here next time on The Backcast. <music>